I'm making a little prequel here to this video. I just want to, to stress the importance of if you've read if you've read about taking the check balls out for performance to get more cooler flows in these stator supports, that's a good thing. If you're just curious about it and maybe you think the project's over your head, that's fine too. But I just want to stress how important it is that you make sure these check balls aren't stuck. Because whether you drill this out and get the check balls out to try to increase cooler flow or not, that check ball has to work or you're going to burn up your transmission fast because it's going to have no cooler flow and there's nowhere for the heat to go. I don't think this is stressed enough and I'm, I've seen a high percentage of these that are stuck. This one was no ex no exception. This a was the AOD and I had to work pretty hard to get that out of there. Um, I've had almost half the C4s I've done. One check ball comes out, the other one's stuck. Um, especially if they've been sitting around for a while. But if you don't drill it out and get rid of it all together, you need to at least figure out a way to get inside the stator support and push up on that check ball and make sure it's not sticking. And if it's stuck when you first push on it, then I'd think real hard about getting rid of it all together because there's a good chance that it's wallered that seat out and that it's gonna stick again. And like I said, there was a, I did one where a guy had rebuilt it two or three times and just kept burning it up and kept burning it up. And then finally he brought it to me and the first thing I noticed when I took the pump out was to drill these check balls out was one of them stuck. And I mean, it was stuck tight. So there was no oil going to the cooler whatsoever. And uh, I just want to, again, stress the importance of at least checking that check ball, if not getting rid of it altogether and drastically increasing the flow of oil through your cooler. So I just wanted to, I'll add this to the front of the video and then once this is over, you can see how to actually do it all right I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while um, I finally got the opportunity I've got a I'm going through this AOD and uh, a common modification on C4s and AODs is to drill out the cooler check balls and I've never seen a good um, video on how to do it for your average guy and I just wanted to walk you through the process um, there's two there's two ways to do it and uh, I've done it both ways. I, when I, the first few times I did it, I did it the first way I'll show you. And then I, anymore, I just drill and tap it and plug it with an eighth-inch pipe plug. But uh, to start with, what we're looking for, this, is a, this one is a C4. And this is an AOD. You can see it's a little, the AOD's got a little beefier. Um, what you want to call that? That goes into, into your forward drum and stuff. But your actual stator support is right here, the rib part that holds the stator inside the torque converter, uh, stationary while the converter spins around it, and that's where you get your torque multiplication from. But regardless, um, the port you're looking for is going to have this big aluminum check ball on it. As you can see, it's straight up right there on the AOD. And then on the back side, if you look in there, let me get a light, uh, you will see that there's a spring and underneath that spring down inside here uh, there's gonna be a check ball or on the I don't know on these AODs this is the first AOD I've done but the C4s there's generally two check balls um, but it would be the same way on it it would be this port which I've already got plugged but they look remarkably similar if you notice it would be um, this one on the C4 and then this one on the AOD. But what I did on this one, I may have done both on this or done one at one time and then went back and did the other. But you can take on the C4s and drill that hole out and you can just fish that spring out. And then um, the check balls, if you drill them out to quarter inch, if you drill the hole out to quarter inch, you can kind of bang it on the, the uh, table and those check balls will come out and you can actually just knock the check balls out. And once in a while, you'll get one that is stuck down in the bottom. Like I said, you've got to make sure there's two to come out. But what happens is, if you can see that port down there, just below that ring, the check ball gets stuck in there. And I have had success with taking an Allen wrench and wedging in there and popping that sucker back up. And they may be stuck regardless of which way you do it, but either way, they got to come out. But anyways, um, 
So like I said, you can just drill that out to quarter inch because factory, this is more like a eighth inch or three sixteenths hole. But like I said, drill the hole, fish the spring out, get the check balls out, and then you're done. Or you drill the aluminum plug out like I'm getting ready to do. It's not those three, it's this big old aluminum plug. You drill that out and then tap it to eighth inch pipe and just put your pipe plug in there and it's done. You don't ever have to worry about it again. And uh, you can do a good job of cleaning down in there or whatever you, uh, you need to do. But I'm not gonna demonstrate drilling the hole out because that one's already done. And this one appears to already be quarter inch so it may have like 5 16 check balls or something like that in it and I'm not gonna bother. Um, I will say on these, you got to be careful as you start to break through with your drill bit. Uh, it w there's a little ledge in there, and you can kind of catch your bit and break your bit. So once you get to where it's about to break through, you know, kind of be gentle. But like I said, you can take a, a pick or something and get that spring pulled out of there, and then just grab with needle nose and just, just pull her out of there. And then, like I said, you can dump them check balls out and then never have to take that aluminum plug out. It'll just you'll have the check balls out, and it'll still have the aluminum plug sitting in there. But I'm going to set this up in the drill press real quick and show you how I get these out. All right, I'll give you three guesses what the first step is. The first step is to, that's right, drill. Um, it's aluminum. It's super soft. Uh, you can drill yourself a little small pilot hole or, you know, and work your way up. But I find, you know, just a, a drill vise works pretty good to hold them in. And uh, I don't have power. Uh... Give me just a second. Okay, but anyways, basically what you want to do is just drill it out. Uh, try to get everything lined up as best you can so you don't drill into the housing, obviously. Um, then you're going to drill it until there's basically just a tiny little shell in there, and then you'll pry that last little bit out with a screwdriver. So I'm going to start with this first one. I think, I don't think I'm trying to, that port's not quite drilled straight. It's kind of drilled funky. So try to get in line with that. Like I said it's aluminum, so once you get it located kind of on the high spot, it don't take much to drill it. Trying to get her started gently. It's a little off center, but that'll be all right. If you feel like you're gonna get into the housing, you might go to a smaller bit. I think what's going on here is I'm just a little bit crooked. So we're gonna go like that. I'm starting with a pretty big bit, so it's taking a second. I would usually drill a pilot in them, but I didn't this time. All right, it's about to break through.
All right, I think I'm through. Pretty sure. Let me take a look. Okay, this one had me questioning whether I knew what I was talking about or not. But uh, regardless, let me get something under this. Um, I got through it. This one pushed the ball down. I should have started with a smaller bit, but what you got is the ball. Okay. And then underneath that, you're going to have, let's see what this one has. There's a spring. It's squished from me drilling on it. Uh, that's full of metal chips, but... It may take some doing. Let me uh, let me pause for a second and I'll get those balls out of there and show you what's down in there. Okay, well that turned into a complete fiasco. That check ball was one of the tightest stuck ones I've ever had. Normally, um, like I said, you can take this and just slam it down on a block of wood if it even takes that. A lot of times, just just gravity will about pull them out. Uh, this brings me to how important it is to do this. Even if you want to put it back, um, that check ball has to be free. I've had almost probably half of the transmissions I've gone through that were C4s. This, I don't do very many AODs, but um, almost half of the C4s I've done have had that check ball stuck. If that check ball stuck, you have no cooler flow. And one, one transmission in particular, which is one of the first ones I've had this happen on, uh, the guy had rebuilt it like three times and it kept lasting like 50 miles. And like he brought it in and I mean, it was smoked. And then I was building it for my race car. So first thing I did, you know, to the pump was uh, go to get them check balls out. And that's when I realized that check ball was stuck and he had no cooler. So even if this is a stock rebuild and you want to put that check ball back, it would still be smart to go ahead and do this and get that out of there and verify that that check ball is working or figure out a way to make sure that check ball moves. I actually had to, this one, the way it's drilled is off to the side. So it's kind of like, um, I stuck a long Allen wrench in this way and it was kind of like off to the side, but it wouldn't reach the check ball. So I stuck some, uh, some other, I've just got some old check balls out of transmissions. I filled the cavity up with check balls and then stuck my wrench in there and then was able to take my pry bar and pop that out. And what it had was, uh, was this, that was the check ball, but I guess that's actually in this order. You have the plug, the spring, and then the check ball and the check ball seats against the uh, stator support. But, uh, Again, I, I just can't stress how important that is to check that. Nobody ever checks it. It's such a small detail that nobody knows about, and it will absolutely ruin your day when you get this thing back together. But um, the last thing to do is to tap it. And I don't know if these are the same size holes. I think I, I feel like this one's a little bit bigger. Well, I can tell by looking at it, it's bigger. I, I'm trying to figure out whether 8-inch pipe's going to do the job or not. Uh... I think I'm going to try it. I may end up having to go quarter, but I was going to show you a trick to make sure you get your tap started straight. Um, what you need is uh, a drill bit that is really close to the size of this. Grab my light. Um, it's really close to the size of this, this bore right there which I've got in there already. I don't know what this is, but it fits it pretty close. I may have a lettered bit that will fit closer. But honestly, this one's close enough. But what you do is put that in there and then get it to where your drill bit will... See right now I'm still crooked a little bit. I don't know if I'm just needing to go over. If you loosen that up a little bit. Okay, my drill bit is floating in and out of there now. 
So tighten your vise down. Make sure your table's square. Okay, see how that's dropping right down in there? Now, take your bit out. This works for everything, not just this. But if you ever need to drill a hole and tap it straight, just don't take the, the work piece out of the vise. And then get your, get your tap. Put it in there. I'm going the wrong way. Nope, I wouldn't. Hard to do one-handed. Definitely going the wrong way. But anyways, put your put it in there. Snug it up. Don't get it crazy tight. And then now when you go back down, I'm going to have to bring the table up a little bit. That tap will be started straight. And then you can turn it by hand a little while till it gets started. And then you can use your, your chuck key to get some leverage and turn a little more. And once you, well, you know you're started good, then, then just loosen up your, your chuck and your tap will stay, you know, you'll have two or three threads in there. Just loosen up your chuck, let your chuck come up and put your tap wrench on there and finish tapping it. Like I said, I'm, I've got to figure out whether this is going to be eighth inch or quarter inch. I kind of think eighth inch will take. I may have to grind a tap, which I actually made a video about making tapping blind holes with pipe thread. Might teach you something over there too. I'm not going to go into it, but if you bottom out your tap, you can grind a few threads off of it and then go down a little bit deeper and then grind a few more threads. Have to buy a new tap, but it'll get you out of a jam. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to show the, the basics of getting that check ball out of there. This one just had one. Like I said, the C4s generally have two. And uh, they're usually a little bit smaller. They're just a quarter inch check ball. See, this is the one that came out of AOD. But when you get done, it's a nice clean deal and it's done and you don't have to mess with it. And if you ever need back in there again, because like you could put the, you could put check balls on a spring back in that now if you wanted to, but I hope this helps somebody out because, like I said, I've never seen a good video on how to do this, and it's a super common, super common deal on C4s. And, and like I said, at least figure out a way to check that check ball and make sure that sucker ain't stuck because if it is, you're going to have a bad day. I am certain of it. So have a good day.